This is one of my rock pile builds that I've been hand casting with a silicone mold. This is a piece of resin, but the original was a variety of XPS foam, rocks, and sand. Today, I want to clean these pieces up and give them a more uniform look. I really want them to look a little more artistic, as that's my preferred look over the realistic rock look. So today, we're working with oil-based clay. This is that type of clay that you may have used when you were a kid. You know, the kind that never dries. It's really great for mock-ups, and if you're looking for something that has a working time of virtually forever, then this clay is the clay you need. I'm using Artist Quality as it's a little smoother, but really, you can just use the Crayola oil-based clay and get a similar result. Here, I'm basically just smoothing out the surface of each rock face, making sure to get rid of the pitting as well as the bubbled look caused from the foam. The mold I was using was slightly damaged, so I'm also repairing some of those spots. I'm also adding in some extra smaller rocks to each of the pieces that I'm working on today. The tools you see me working with are a ceramic needle, a rubber-tipped shaper, a paintbrush, and this wooden pottery tool. I decided that it would be a good idea to build up the base of each rubble pile as well. So I added about 1 to 2 millimeters of clay to the bottom of each base. I mainly did this because some of my previous molds had some strength issues with a few of the outer smaller rocks. In order to form the extra smaller rocks, I first add small balls of clay where I want each rock. Then I sculpt them into more jagged shapes with my rubber shaper tool. I add more detail to everything with my needle. I'm just dotting everything with some random sized holes, making sure really to just give hints of these details and not going too overboard. Then I use my brush to smooth out some of the surfaces. This gets rid of some of the fingerprints as well as wears down some of the details that we added in the previous step. Where it was needed, I went back in with the needle to bring out some more details, just for a little bit more variation. And I have one concern, and that's more with the silicone than it is this. This looks great, but I bought some two-part fast curing silicone to cast this sort of material in, and I'm not sure if it will melt the clay or if it even gets that hot. We're gonna find out, so stay tuned to see if we melt this and mess up the whole project and have to start over. Um, this clay doesn't cure because it's oil-based clay, and it can be a positive thing or a bad thing, so we'll see. This is not my first time making a silicone mold. This is my first time making a silicone mold with Legos. Basically, the point is that they are reusable and you can form the bricks into practically any shape you need with very little effort. So, I just hot glue my Lego walls onto my glass cutting board. I place my rocks inside, then I get to mixing up the silicone. Today, I'm using SmoothCast 16 Fast Cure Silicone. When they say this is fast cure, they mean that. So you really have to work fast with this silicone. You are taking a chance if you plan on using silicone cups while mixing silicone. So today, we're using plastic cups. I'm using sand to make myself a measuring cup out of these normal plastic cups. I pour the sand in one cup, add a line with a Sharpie, then pour the same sand into the other cup and add another line with a Sharpie. This method is accurate enough for the silicone to cure. After that, I make sure to wipe out all the particulates with a dry paper towel. You can use water instead of sand, but if you do, make sure the cups are 100% dry before mixing any silicone or resin, as it can cause an adverse reaction to either one of those. Now I pour equal parts of both A and B, which is why we made the markings on the cup. The thinner of the two, I pour into the thicker, just to make it easier to get equal amounts. Alternatively, you can just pour both into a separate cup. Then I mix thoroughly, but in a way to prevent too much bubbling. Basically slowly and not like you're beating cake batter. Different silicones mix differently. This particular one needs to be mixed for about a minute and a half, and that's max. Other silicones can take up to 10 minutes to mix though, so make sure you pay attention to the directions or you're just going to have a gloopy mess on your hands, and that's speaking from experience. I leave this for about 10 minutes and then come back. You may notice there's some bubbling with this silicone, the only way to get rid of the bubbling is to use a vacuum chamber before the pour, which we may or may not have even had time to do with this silicone. I'm not so sure as I don't have one, but when I get one, we will have to try that out. That said, most of the bubbles most likely gathered at the very top of the mold. 
So let's see what we got. You'll notice as I pull these out that some of the oil-based clay is still sticking inside of the mold. That really isn't a problem as I didn't plan on reusing the sculpts. I just pick out all the clay and it looks like this mold is a success. I don't see any visible bubbles in the important parts of the mold. We will find out when we do the resin casts next. But first, I finish a few more molds and I clean them up nicely with a hobby knife. Which isn't a necessary step, but it does look a whole lot better. And now it's time to mix the resin. Make sure you're working in a well ventilated area and wear gloves and a mask when working with resin. This time I'm using Smoothcast 300, which is an extremely fast curing resin that when working with is almost bubble free, which I think is mainly due to the viscosity of the resin. It's literally almost as thin as water. Working on a level surface, mix half and half. I'm also adding a few drops of brown resin dye to the mix. A silicone mixing cup works great for this stage, so I definitely recommend. I will have Amazon links in the description to any of the supplies I'm using that are sold on Amazon. And that basically helps out the channel at no extra cost to you. So it's a very much appreciated when you purchase through those links. I mix this resin for about a minute and 10 seconds or until it feels like it's getting hot in the cup. And this resin does get hot, so be careful if you're sensitive to that sort of thing. The one thing about Smoothcast 300 is that you really have to work fast. The first time I used it, I literally had resin cure midstream, which could be a cool effect if that's what I was going for, but it's definitely not what I was going for. I don't recommend using fire to pop the bubbles. It can be very dangerous, so don't do it. It can cause fires and release toxic chemicals, so it's a bad idea with this type of resin. Rather than that, wait about 20 minutes after shaking up your containers and there will be no bubbles. Now, watch the cool time lapse as the resin cures. can take these out a few minutes later. It's 10 minutes to a full cure, but they are handleable after five minutes. They will still be pretty hot, but if you're in a hurry, you can easily dish these out about every five minutes. I usually have two or three silicone cups that I'm mixing in while I'm waiting for a set to cure, and there's a continuous workflow, which beats the time it takes to make these rock piles just gluing them together with foam and glue. So I recently got a bunch of the resin dye on clearance at Hobby Lobby. So I was testing out some of the colors. You could seriously just add a wash with a dry brushed highlight to these and the rocks would be great as is. But for this set, I need them to match the rest of the terrain in my shop. So keep watching if you want to watch my quick and easy but good paint job. I started with a base layer of black spray paint. This is just a lower priced flat black that I got from the hardware store. I wear a nitrile glove to prevent any fingerprints as well as getting too much paint on my hands. It's hard to see in this video, but there's actually two shades of gray modeled together. Then, while they're still wet with the gray paint, I add some hints of burnt sienna to the rocks. I do a sort of modeled wet blend just to hint at some iron content to the rocks. Then I set it aside to dry. The last layer is a light dry brush of cream colored paint. That's it. That's all I usually do. You can add washes after this step, but I say do it sparingly and don't completely cover your piece in black wash. You can just dull it down a little too much and I'm not a huge fan of that look. And this is what we end up with. Mm -hmm. 